So it was another busy weekend of club action in football up and down across the country over the weekend. Of course, as you may have seen with my match reaction video yesterday, Clonagate or Poor Pierce is even claiming honours in Roscommon. But also another one of the counties that really kind of stood out uh, from the weekend was the Tyrone semi-finals. Of course, one of them games was televised on Saturday evening with Dremore overcoming Trilloch in a very, very tight encounter. To look back on that game and Colas Island's dramatic victory over Errigal Kieran yesterday, I'm delighted to be joined by Tyrone footballer Kyle Coney. Tyro, uh, Kyle, uh, first of all, how was all with yourself? Yeah, keeping well, keeping well. Um, coming into the, the winter time and going under a bit of surgery myself for an ankle in injury picked up just prior to the championship. Yeah, nasty, I suppose, time to kind of just miss out on, on fortune, I suppose, from a, a personal point of view. We'll just kind of look, I suppose, first and foremost on, on Saturday's game. I only kind of got to see the tail end of this one um, because I had a, my own match on Saturday. But a dramatic game. Uh, eventually, Jamore came out on top, 17 points, 2-9 against Trillick. They looked for all certainty, like they had the game wrapped up by the first water break. There were seven points to no, to nothing in front. Then Trillick come back into the game with a couple of goals. Uh, Lee Brennan, of course, someone uh, a lot of people might be familiar with grabbing one of them goals. Uh, Simon Garrish, he would do the other one as well. They then looked like they were going to uh, stage a dramatic comeback. But Dramore showed great character and resilience in the end to book their place in Desider. Yeah, um, probably you, you hit the nail in the head there. That, uh, that Tyrone Championship is just so topsy turvy. It's so competitive. It's so. Um, the word it's you, you can't call it, um. So we seen that the first twenty minutes, Dremore ha had went seven nil up. Then we we seen Trillick come out after the water break and uh, and sort of find their feet to, and get into the rhythm of the game. Um, Ronan McNabb made a bit of a, a mistake by not not collecting the ball from the kick out, to, uh, and Lee Brennan got it into the net, and they sort of rallied and made a bit of a comeback. But then fair play to um Dremore who. Sort of got their burns about them again, and, and steadied the ship, and just were a bit like a well-oiled machine got going again, and pegged their, pegged themselves back into the match, and, and went on to win it. Like it was, it was a brilliant game, you know. Uh, and I'm glad that it, the Throne Championship got a bit of airtime on on RTE till for the the display because this has been an ongoing um, thing in Throne over the last number of years. And look, if Tremor do win the championship this year, that's six different winners in, in six years. Yeah, that kind of I suppose backs up the point that we hear a lot of people say that it arguably is out there one of the most competitive club championships. Like I remember last year you were saying about getting the airtime, like RT, I think because it ends up being a double header in Healy Park, televised both games last year. And they were mm -hmm. probably two of the best games you could have watched for a Saturday night entertainment. And this one once again kind of living up to us, we're going to touch on with yesterday's encounter, such an an end to end kind of type game. Is it maybe just kind of a little bit of a, a surprise? I know it's still a while away, but Looking ahead to an Ulster campaign, that I can't remember was the last time a Tyrone team would have got their hands on an Ulster club title. I know Oma, I think, got to the final in 2014. You may, may correct me on that. If, if a Tyrone yeah, no, I think, you're, I think you're right. Yeah, you, you just kind of wonder maybe. I know there's you know, traditional powerhouses there like Cross McLean, Kilku kind of dominated the last kind of couple of years. You look at um, uh, Guido and Donegal all squeezed in with the title as well. That you know, somehow that a Tyrone club hasn't got on the roll of honour in recent times. Yeah, yeah, that that that's always the the question that he's bandied about out there. You know, why why does Tyrone teams or why does the Tyrone champions not not do so well in in Ulster? And look, at what I put that down to is every single game from the preliminary round. You look at it from from my club's perspective this year. Um, Arbo, um, our game with Tremor on the fifty eighth minute was ten apiece. We um they went on to win the game twelve ten with two free kicks later on. That we would think were dubious enough, but look, that's that's you know, here and there. But they went on to win it. Um, they played against Dungannon and uh, in the first round. That was a preliminary round, and the next round was a first round. So it was a, such a competitive game. Dungannon were, I think, went two goals up. Dromore come back to 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 win the game. Um, it's just every game is a championship final. So that's. That's why it's so competitive, and when they get till the final, it's probably such an elation to win it. You have five games that take the life and soul out of you. When they get to the Ulster Club, I'm not sure that there's much left in any team. Yeah, I think as well. If I'm uh, correct in saying, it seems to be one of the only few championships out there that kind of keeps with the traditional format of of straight knockout. Most of the counties seem to have 
you know, at least some form of a backdoor or predominantly a group stage. And we always hear kind of the old classic saying it's hard beat kind of knockout. Do you think that maybe he even just adds to kind of the Tyrone mm. football championship? Where like when you know in your first game, like you have to be at the pitch, you have to go out, give it everything. Whereas in other counties, you're like, oh, we'll have two more games. If this result doesn't go away, we can still feed our way into this competition. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's correct. Like I'm thinking different championships, Armagh, Derry. Derry had a seeded um, championship, I think, this year where they, you had to play a certain games and then you were seeded in a group. And I do believe, and that's why Tyrone championships uh, um, get the biggest crowds as well. Like I remember our game against Ramore, there would have been about 4,000 uh, people in um, Pomeroy. It would have been the same yesterday in Pomeroy. Uh, the, the stand looked packed. The, the, both sides of the pitch were, were jammed with people. That, that you know, sense of your you have to be on your game for that day. There's there's no second chance. Um, look, we we seen it this year in the championship with in the county championship with with Tyrone. That that sense of you know it's today or it's never uh, sort of sticks by you, uh, and that's what you have to you have to perform on the day because there's no second chance. I really do believe that. That's what makes it so competitive as well that you you can't rely on another day or you can't rely on a group or a back door. It's it's a brilliant competition. Yeah, and once you get to the semi-final stage, you can have no more second chances anyway, as unfortunately is try to find out. So we thought that game kind of was maybe going to top the excitement from the weekend. But I think yesterday's game, from now again, I was at the Roscommon County final, so I was only following bits of this on Twitter yesterday. But an unbelievable comeback in the end by uh, Cole Island and Nafina to defeat Aragal Kieran, who looked to have this game uh, wrapped up. They led uh, 11 points to 5 with 10 minutes remaining. And then that great kind of last surge from um, Cole Island scoring three goals, of course, obviously to be well known, some one of their more, well most one of their some of their some of the well known players include the likes, of course, Pork Hamsey, of course, Captain Tyrone, Michael McKeon as well. But it was the likes of uh, Jason Carberry, Tier uh Tiernan and Quinn and Brian uh, D- uh, Toner, who obviously would be the heroes as they got the three goals to complete one of the most dramatic comebacks you're probably like to see likely to see this year. Yeah, uh, I honestly couldn't believe what was happening in front of my eyes. Um, I had it on the iPad just yesterday evening, um, watching it because uh, the stream doesn't, whatever way that it works with the TV, sometimes it buffers a wee bit, and I, I like just to watch it a bit under on uninterrupted. So uh, it was in the 48th minute of that game, um, Kalilin were down by six points and went down to 13 men and end up kicking the winner on the 64th minute. So it's just it, it was complete. I honestly couldn't believe what was happening in front of me. It it was a game that Ergil seemed to have it sewed up, uh, as you said, at eleven five or eleven six. Um, it seemed dead and buried. But Kalilin had done this against Aidan Dark, where they were six or seven down as well. Uh, they had their work cut out against Carrick Moore. I think it was a lot tighter in the quarter final, but. They are a team that, that never say a day. They have that attitude about them. They have that type of um, championship tradition where they're they're never dead until the final whistle goes. And look, that's that's what it's all about. They, there was a high ball put in and Brian Toner sort of caught the ball on the edge of the square. And it was in between two Argyle Cairn players and the goalkeeper and neither of the three of them contested the ball. He caught it cleanly and sort of stepped out and turned onto his weaker left foot and, and tucked it in the net. And then... Cormac O'Hagan had two free kicks. Um, he, he had two free kicks to win it. He, he had won about, uh, I would say it was about 50 metres, and then he, he just tailed that one to the left. And then again, I think Kalein were sort of trying to keep the ball because, you know, whenever they had 13 men, if the game was going to extra time, they would have got back to their full quota of players and back to full 15. And I'm not sure who made a bit of a, I think it might have been Cormac himself when I'm thinking back now, made a bit of a, a run forward and, and was tackled from from behind and sure enough he, he the free kick was from about 48 metres a bit to the right hand side and it had about 5 metres left on it and Kalilin celebrated Jewishly. it was it was just a, a crazy crazy whirlwind last 12-13 minutes Is it you know possibly kind of fair to say as well that it might come a little bit of cost for Coyle Island say if Michael McKiernan isn't clear to play at the final like I, I don't know now you'd obviously be better to answer this whether it was two yellows or a straight red but like obviously, you know, he's a player that who's really established himself very comfortably in the county scene with Tyrone. If he wasn't to be available, how much of a loss would that be? Oh, it'll be a massive loss. Um I, I think it was two yellows, if I'm thinking right. I could be wrong. I I'm not sure, but it would be a massive loss. Uh the, the first day out he picked up Dharma Curry in the 
in their, in their first round game. Um, and, and he done really well. Both players done really well, but Michael done really, really well going forward and sort of putting Darren on the back foot. Uh, the the last, second game out against, I didn't see it against Carrick Moore. I, I, I was away that day. And then obviously I seen yesterday's game where he, he was picking up Dara Canavan, who eventually had to go, to go off due to injury. But it'd be a massive loss because that would be one of Kalilin's main men, him and they would look to him and Porg Hamsey and um, a few other older men like Plunkett Kane and, and Stephen McNally. They, they would look to those sort of guys to be their driving force. And if the game is in the melting pot uh, at that stage, you know, the later stages of the game, that would be one of the players that, that Kalilin would be looking to play for. So it would be a massive blow if, if it turns out that it was a yellow and a red, a straight red then. So I'm not sure. I, I haven't heard any indications today and uh, on what it was. I'm not sure. Maybe you have a bit more information on that. No, I didn't um, hear anything different on that just from snippets of seeing different various articles and websites of uh, reports. But obviously, if it's two yellows, you imagine he'd be cleared and no problem. Yeah. Just from a psychological point of view for Eric or Kieran going forward, like how damaging can this be? Like they were in a very good position last year in the semi final against Dungannon, didn't kind of see it out, ends up you know losing in the cruelest manner with the last score of a game after extra time. And in this situation, looking home and hose, numerical advantage. Couldn't see it out, and like you'd be looking at them, like you know, from an outsider looking in, you're thinking like the team that has the Canavans, Peter Hart. This is a team that has potential to go so far, but just can't seem to maybe get over that second last hurdle at, over the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, you're right. Um, last year they they had a free kick to go two up <clears throat> against Dungannon, and uh, that free kick hit the post and come back up the field, and and Dungannon got an equalizer, and then eventually went went on to win the game. This year, as you say, a numerical advantage, 13 men on the opposition team to their 15 was it's something that can be a psychological um, disadvantage to you. And when you get to that stage, you know, next year or whenever the time may arise again for them that, that they can't get over the line, these things may play in their head that, oh, you know, we have only, we've only done it at a certain stage or this group of players haven't done it. So, It'd be something that they would like to put to bed very quickly. They are a really, really, really good side. They have really some quality players. Their one to fifteen is probably as strong as anywhere is in in Tyrone. So they have Rory Canavan who come on yesterday, who looks a real, real serious player. Um, Nell Kelly, who's on the Tyrone team, Ben McDonald, who, who's been uh, on the panel now for a few years, and we say Peter Hart and, and our Dara Canavan. So look, it's only. A- Just seem to have lost Kyle there for a second. Can you just can you hear me there now, Kyle? His sound just seems to have gone there. Sorry, is uh, something did it go there? Yeah, you're you just your your drop your sound had just dropped there for a couple of seconds, but it seems to be all good. Oh, sorry. I just want to continue on the point that you were making there. Yeah. No, just that the, the I'm not sure how far you heard me up till there. Uh, I think you're kind of just as far as just you know uh, on about the county potential in terms of Tyrone squad that Eric O'Keefe and have and the likes of Ben McDonald. Yeah, Arnold. yeah, they they have some fantastic players, and I say their their bench is probably as strong as anybody's in Tyrone, and the players that they have in terms of Peter Hart and Dara Canavan and and the rest of the fellas, they would want to put that to bed as soon as possible, you know, because there can be a psychological factor that nips into the team. That's twice now it's happened in two years in a row, and. I would say that they'll not fear nothing or they'll not think about anything like that just yet. They'll, they'll think they can get over the line. But if it did happen to, to happen to them next year again, that there would be something that would be in the back of their heads at all times. I know it's it's still a while away and semi-finals are fresh from just being completed. But if you had to kind of call it at the moment, where would your head be swaying between Drumore and Goal Island? Um, I'll be honest, before a before ball was kicked this year in, in the championship, I, I probably would have... You know, I would have loved to say my, my own t- uh, club team was going to make the final, um, but I wouldn't have predicted if I had to p- put my, all the eggs in one basket, I wouldn't have picked Dremor and Kalilin to be in the final. Just probably uh, Dremor probably had a better league form. Kalilin probably were a bit up and down, but they are, have a serious championship pedigree. They know how to win. They know how to get over the line. Um, if I was to pick a winner on this occasion by watching both games on Saturday night, I, I'd Saturday and Sunday, I think that I might just favour Kyle for the for the sake of they probably won the championship most recently. I think back in two thousand eighteen, um, 
They have probably a bench that the Tiernan Quinn can come on, do a job. The brother Kahar can come on. Um, Brian Toner's experience to, to bring on. So j- just for that reason, I, I, I would sway towards Cal Island, But as I say, in Tyrone, I would have picked... <laughs> Somebody had asked me on Saturday at two o'clock whether I said Dramore Ergel um, or Ergel uh, Trillic final, and now it's a Dramore Kalin final. So it's it's mad how it works out in Tyrone here. Yeah, it's, anything could happen. Like look, last year's final was decided by a penalty shootout. So don't rule out any possibility in the Tyrone decider in a couple of weeks' time. Just might look on at some of the other kind of action from in around the province of Ulster as well. Those are kind of standout games from the weekend where the Derry semi-finals, as we touched on there a little bit off off air. Comprehensive victory for the Glen over the loop yesterday, three nineteen to five points. So they'll head into the final. Kind of, it's fair to say after being untested from their semi-final. But Shockney were pushed all the way in their semi-final, uh, eventually overcoming Lavi, one thirteen to two six after extra time. We have a situation very similar to Shockney down in, in Tipperary with Lockmore, Cass and Eilie. They're in the hurling final after yesterday. They got football semi-final next weekend. Shock Neil obviously completed yet another uh, Derry Championship which winning that uh, competition last weekend. Going still strong um, here looking to claim another Derry title. The feeling maybe is from a hurling kind of point of view that while they can possibly still get out of Ulster, maybe the boat has just sunk a little bit if they can go all the way in hurling. From a football point of view, I know it's a while since they've um, claimed Ulster honours, but would they still be very much looking at claiming that um, trophy early in the new year and possibly getting to Crow Park in February? Yeah, I, w- I would imagine so. With being um, with being so competitive in their own championship and, and winning it, probably I think they went for four in a row, they got nipped for five. Um, uh, I, I, w- I would imagine that their sights, albeit that they'll not be, um, they'll, they'll not, uh, be looking past Glenn, who have been an up and coming team, they, you know, I think it's maybe five or six years ago from they won the three Ulster Miners in a row, and people probably expected their minor team just to burst onto the scene and, and take over the Derry um, Club Championship. But that's not the way it works. Whenever you know you have young lads coming into the senior game against seasoned um, adult men, you know, so Slockney will be looking. They probably get the their their they'll call it their championship back again, and then they'll take it every step at a time for the for the Ulster Club again because. It's probably something that they wanted to push on, even get to the, the All Ireland final again, where they, they lost against. I think it was Doctor Crooks that year. Um, but um, I think Glen are, are a really informed team in Derry. It's it's been talked about with with the management that they appointed in Malachy O'Rourke. So Glen would be probably. I'm not sure who would be favourites. Maybe Slockdale just with the bit more pedigree in terms of last few years that they, they they've been to the final so many times and won the championship, but. Glenn's going to be the same with the way they dismantled the loop yesterday. Um, loop only scored, I think, five points to the movie, like 3-16. So it's going to be a really, really interesting close game in the final. Whoever takes the Derry Championship will, will favour their chances to, to go all the way in Ulster, I think. Yeah, and the three other county final deciders next week as well in the province. You've got the Donegal final between St. Ewan's and Nave Connell. I think Nave Connell going for, for three in a row, if uh, memory serves me correct. They obviously had yeah. that situation last well with last year's final only a couple of weeks ago against Kilcar, but eventually the Ulster Council going in their favour. That's actually going to be live on TG Car. Then the down final you got old rivals Kilku and Byrne going head to head. And the Monaghan final we've got Scottstown who've been always knocking on the door the last couple of years up against uh Trulla as well next Sunday. Have any then kind of championships? I know a lot of them are the neighbouring counties of Tyrone have you kind of been keeping an, uh, an eye on and who's you know which you think possibly out of them six teams could maybe do the best in Ulster if they were to come away victorious next Sunday? Um, well, we, we look at the down championship for, for a start and, you know, Kilku have been there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many they're going for, if, uh, if it's so many in a row or were they nipped um, last year. Kent, mate. Was it 2018, 20, I think, uh, Byrne nipped them in the final. Yeah, so they're, they're back to probably going for three in a row again. Yeah. So, or two... They have a really um, strong team, and uh, they have the Brannigans and um, the kept the other fellow's name for Johnsons for Down as well. So they have a serious, serious team, and it's probably as close to you know so, some of the county teams as you're going to get the, with the panel of players that they have. They they'll probably be big favourites in Down this year, and I would imagine that they will come out come out on top. Um, then then we look to Scotstown or the Monaghan final as well, where. Scottstown uh, have been 
the team to catch there for a number of years now with the, the amount of players they have. Um, with the Cusas, um, Rory Began, uh, they, they just have a panel of players that, that you would love to have at, at your club level, you know, and I think that they do have a, have a very big pick, but they have been the club team to catch in, in Monaghan and they've been knocking on the door as Ulster as well. Um, them and Kilku had a, or them and Guido had a great battle up in Oma a few years ago. I mind watching it on TG4 was a, was a great game, a, a real wet um, Sunday, typical Ulster Championship or club championship game. So I, I would I would probably fancy Kilku to make a real run for it, a real statement for, for Ulster this year and push on to see where, where they can get against, you know, the top teams in the, in all Ireland stages, the Corfins and those like types of teams will be there thereabouts again, I'm sure. Yeah, like it is of course, you know, not that well, the last kind of club series that there was, like they were there on that Ireland final day and brought Curf in all the way to extra time, just kind of falling mm -hmm. short and that. Just kind of finally before we uh finish up Kyle, it's it's seven weeks on, of course, since uh Tyrone claimed their third or fourth Ireland Ireland crown to beat Mayo in, in that final. I suppose look, seven weeks on, it's it's fair to say the celebrations have been parked because as we now know the county championship has been very, very uh, rapidly ran off at the final stage already. I suppose just even quickly looking ahead to 2022, I suppose the big thing kind of coming into Tyrone is, you know, the last three times that they won the All-Ireland, not even so much so that they never done back-to-back, -back, but a lot of them cases, particularly 2005 and 2006, or was it, sorry, 2004 and 2006, after the years after the All-Ireland, were probably disappointing years, particularly mm -hmm. 2006, like getting knocked down the qualifiers by Leash, I think not mm -hmm. scoring the first half of the game against Derry. Is it kind of fair to say that it does be a little bit of a kind of a Art Ireland hangover from Tyrone into county scene and that like that would be something that Fergal Logan and Brian Doher will be very quick to nip in the boat this year? Yeah, um uh, as you uh, as you well say there, there's uh, I wouldn't say that it's an all Ireland hangover. Uh, um I would say that it's more uh that targets more on your back then than than it, it probably had been previously because you're the hunter. Well, the year before, well, all of a sudden you become the hunted, you know, if you understand what I mean. Everybody previously had been out to get Dublin and, and nobody could to get, sort of could nip them. I know Kerry got close and Mayo got close, but nobody got over the line against them. So I think it becomes more that, that you, you're becoming the hunted now and people are trying to catch you, your targets on your back. We, we've seen how competitive the Ulster Championship is. Derry are back in the scene again. Armagh have, an, uh, have a team that, that are capable of challenging. Donegal's a real strong force in Ulster. So are Monaghan. So Gavin had been there a couple of years ago as well. So getting out of Ulster alone, you know, whether you know we have an all Ireland or we have, a, we have a back door or not, that's going to be really, really tough for them. So Tyrone's going to ha have the, when it, whenever the draw is made, they're going to be straight out. Somebody wants to just put down their marker against them straight away. So it's a job for Fergal and Brian to get those players back in, get them injury free after the club scene. The, they're having a team holiday this year um, in America. So when they get back from that to, uh, and get their feet settled again, it'll be it'll be interesting for them to see how they go about it. It'll be obviously a different approach because all three all Ireland's previous had come under Mickey Hart. So it'll be interesting to see how um, the new management handle the, the aftermath and, and how they approach the 2022 season. Yeah, just even... Uh, looking as well, you're on a Tyrone team in 2008 that won a minor at Ireland defeat Mayo after a replay, and still looking at you know that team and, and players who still are going strong with the Tyrone senior team, the likes of Peter Hart and Matty Donnelly. You know they've been a long time on the on the scene at, at senior level with Tyrone. I think they kind of burst on there about ten or eleven years ago. The fact now that they finally got that um, Celtic Cross medal in their back pocket, like where are they going to rank now in terms of you know the great Tyrone teams from say the Previous sides have claimed that Ireland's back in the noughties. Um, yeah, as you say, so back in two thousand and eight, um, Peter Hart and Matty Donnelly were were mainstays in the Tyrone minor team at that time. They've been there for a few years, like myself. So we we both sort of come into the squad in two thousand and nine, and then uh, Peter Hart was probably the most regular um feature out of the rest of us. Matty actually opted out of the panel and I spoke to Mickey Hart at, at that time. Said he wanted to go away and, and work on his uh, his physical size and strength and come back into the panel and and, and he did he do that, and that well anyway he, he, he came back a, a physical man able to handle himself really really well so 
th- those boys now have to be up there with, with, with the other fellas who, who won the, the All Ireland for Tyrone. And you know what? Uh, yes, we can say that you know there's boys who have two or three All Ireland medals, but the Peter Hearts and the Matty Donnellys have served Tyrone really, really well over the last ten or eleven years, and it's it's been just reward for for them to to soldier that long and and get finally get over the line. I think uh, I had been speaking to a lot of them. I'd been really close with with, with the right few of them and. Speaking till them after the game and and in a few days after after that it was a serious sense of relief. Uh, there was the the most frequent word used was just that sense of relief to get over the line and to say I've done it, to do all the hard training that that they'd done because they'd been knocking on the door but just hadn't beat a Kerry or a Mayo or Dublin in the championship. It's it was it was a sense of relief and like a, a weight off their shoulders. So. It would be no surprise to me to to see Tyrone do back to back just with with that sense of relief, you know, and not have that pressure on them anymore of saying, you know, you haven't delivered on on the big stage. Now they've delivered and delivered really, really well under the new management. It, it, it wouldn't be a, a shock to me to see them back in the final and, and even go all the way again. Yeah, and, and to end any talk of speculation of me asking questions like I did just before that about back to back and. Hangovers from Ireland, Ireland from the previous year. Kyle, thanks very much for taking the time out even to look back on them Tyrone semi finals in the weekend and discuss maybe some of those club action, I suppose, things in general with Tyrone. And of course, uh, best of luck as well with your surgery, as you touched on there at the start of the show as well. No problem. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Kyle. No bother.